Hello everyone. It's Brina the Slow Knitter. It's the end of January. Last week is coming up. I'm happy to be here. This is episode 47, which is the episode where I tell you what I've done in 2019 and to tell you to help me because I'm in whip. Well, I said whip island, but I'm really in whip hell. I can't get anything finished. Anyway, Hi, welcome. I'm Rena from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm known as the Slow Knitter Everywhere. On Ravelry, I'm the Slow Knitter ATL. All the information will be below. Welcome back to my subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the little subscribe button below. There's a bell next to it, which will notify you when I podcast next. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna try to get on a better schedule for my podcast. I kind of fell off the wagon a little last year. Or let like months go by, I won't, that won't happen again. And the longest I go between would be about a month, but I'm just gonna do every few weeks. But I'd like to show you things I've done. Anyway, let's start with the fact that I finished one, two, three, four, five sweaters this year in 2019. There was a lot of sweater knitting going on at Slow Near Headquarters. A lot of sweater knitting. I'm wearing one, which is my Koivu sweater by Caitlin Hunter of Boylan, uh, Boyland Knits. Uh, and I love it. I, in fact, people are sick of say, seeing me in this. Uh, it's really been a dream job. First of all, I would say this is my first, is it my, yeah, my first color work sweater. If you've ever done a Caitlin Hunter um, pattern. She writes a beautiful, beautiful pattern for um, color work. So simple, so straightforward. Um, not a lot of gobbledygook. But now, if you look at the pattern, um, there's usually a lot more going on over here. Like all this stuff is over here. Um, after conferring with my knitting group, my squirrel group, um, we decided maybe I shouldn't do the patterning on the body and just leave it on the yoke and maybe think about the sleeves. And I particularly love these sleeves, the right length for me. There's some, there's texture sections around here and these are sort of like pearl texture sections. It's really been a fabulous project and I love this sweater. Love it, it's the perfect length. It's just so, I'm like copying everything I did on this sweater. Um, uh, the, I used Quince DK in the Jupiter colorway for the, it, it looks, it's really a very light, light gray, a whitish gray. Um, and then the darker gray is Primrose Yarn Co. Uh, and this is their DK, their MCN DK, Quince, it's also a DK, uh, but the um, gray is called graphite, and it is a dream to work with. I have some leftover, so I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with the leftovers. Maybe another color work sweater, or maybe a plain one. Anyway, I am flipped over this one. I just, you know, there's nothing I don't like about it. And uh, again, she writes a beautiful pattern. So uh, I would absolutely, if, another opportunity came across. And um, there are other opportunities to knit stuff that she designs. Um, I'd like to mix it up and use other designers, but I would go back if something really struck me, like I, I really want to do the Novelli tee. I'm just not ready. I, I, I'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, and then I did two, two ranunculuses. You remember this one, and this is also Primrose, um, and this is her um, fingering weight. And this is Ranunculus number one, and this was done in sort of a Tweety um, silk. Uh, and this is the one I did halfway, uh, <laughs> halfway stocking it the right way. If we reverse stuck in it. And I'll tell you about my Stephen West episode this last week. And he was wearing a similar kind of sweater. Now I don't feel bad about this at all. I love this sweater. So light. 
the, the silk is so light. And I finished my turtle dove, um, which was using um, Wolfo? No. Yeah. Um, and I love this sweater. If I didn't do another one of these, I would make them really long sleeves and I probably wouldn't do a turtleneck. I don't know. I love it though. It's, I would probably make it longer. I, blah, 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 I probably, probably. But yeah, these are all lessons learned. Each sweater has a lesson. Each of these sweaters has a lesson for me, which is good because then I still kind of write it down and keep track of what I wouldn't do again, what I would do again. Yeah. So yeah, 2019. I let it, I knit a ton of sweaters. I, well, for me. I mean, I have a friend who knits like a sweater a week. I could never do that. That's just not my style. Anyway, I'm too distracted by startitis. I have terrible cast on itis. I'm just starting everything. I don't know why. Anyway, and I have not abandoned my shawl knitting, which I'm going back to a lot of after the Stephen West workshop that I went to. Now all I want to do is Stephen West shawls and his crazy colors that are way outside my comfort zone, but they're so fun. So anyway, but I'll show you the shawls that I made. This year I'm going to put these aside for just a second. So I started out this year finishing a Helen Stewart shawl that I love. Lesson number, this is her, um, yeah. Uh, I love this, this chevron lace wrap. Loved it. Um, I think I made it too short. I think if I had another whole lace section, it, it doesn't wrap around quite enough, you know, but yeah, yeah I would just wear it straight like this. I'm really conflicted. It's really conflict here. Um, but I, I really loved this experience. And so, um, I did it with Finito, which is the gray and Finito from Malabrigo is one of my favorite yarns. And this is an indie dyer, um, Sheila from Oklahoma, Bigfoot Fibers sent me this gorgeous, gorgeous lavender color. And um, I use that for the lace section. And again, I would just, I, if I did it again, I would make it like another foot or so longer, but still very useful, very useful. I love the weight, it's kind of lightweight. Yeah, it's great. Um, and then I did a knit along with my friends at Heart and Spirit Atlanta, and they picked out all these yarns, they helped me pick out these yarns. And this is just a fun, this is a hohi um, shawl, a lot of short rows and fun. And Magley, my friend, um, one of the owners of Heart and Spirit, actually helped me pick out the yarn, which is a combination of Farmer's Daughter and um, an indie dyer I know from um, Scotland, uh, Farmer's Daughter and something else. Anyway. She modified the pattern for me because I felt it was too long. Uh, and it is the funnest shawl. I have a blouse that's this pinkish color. It's just fun to wear. It's a great size for me because I'm sort of little and you can wear it anyway. And I remember when we, when Bob and I traveled to, um, where'd we go? Ah, uh, when we did our Mediterranean cruise and we were sitting in a really freezing air conditioned space base waiting to get um called for something and he was freezing and I put this around him and he said oh that's warm I thought oh maybe I'll make a shawl for him um but uh, yeah it's it's just a fun fun it's kind of Stephen Westy you know yeah. uh and this one I this one became a slog but the end product is fabulous and I love it and wear it all the time around my house I just throw it on this is a Helen Stewart this is the rune shawl and I use Madeline um yeah Madeline Tosh and barnyard knits and it's just a simple triangle uh and I just wear it all the time like a triangle I do I love it and I did the I-cord bind off which is my favorite kind of bind off for a shawl and 
it's it's just a fantastic show i'm crashing like crazy but i'm just reviewing i'm reviewing um so yeah i just love it love it love it it's lightweight it's fingering i could wear it anytime really you know anytime and then the last shawl the most recent shawl i made even though i have a few on the needles um is hohi locatelli did a one skein storm excuse me storm shawl um and I had, this is also Malabrigo, and I had some in my stash. Um, it's just a finger, it's just a sock yarn. But I'll tell you, this was a blast because I didn't know anything about these like ladder lace or, uh, and it was, it's fun, it was fun to knit and I love this color. This, this is sort of my color, although I'm stepping way outside my color comfort zone with uh, stuff that I'm working on. Um, and socks, did a lot of socks. Socks are sort of my comfort place too. I just, like when, I have a lot of tendonitis issues with my right side. And so right now I'm having, so I have to ban myself from knitting this weekend, which is really hard. Um, but yeah, I'm, a lot of these patterns are um, Mina Phillips knitting expat patterns and if they're not one of her patterns there uh, I did hey brown berries pebble beach pebble something show a uh, sock I only made one I don't know something happened to the yarn this is using old rest rest of chair pardon me old rest of chair I went between um German short row heel afterthought heel uh, fish lips kiss heel still I think my favorite is afterthought uh, but then again sometimes I don't do a great job at afterthought uh, so I'm gonna perfect it. I learned how to do two to time socks this year and the first two to time sock I made was actually out of neighborhood fiber DK I don't usually make socks out of DK yarn I usually do sock yarn um, but these neighborhood fi this neighborhood fiber Holloway is just I'm like I want a sweater out of that so Magley from Heart and Spirit is going to try and snag me a few skeins of this Holloway which is the Alice Gadzinski Holloway from Neighborhood Fiber and I just see I see a basic raglan sweater and I think Magley and um, Veronica helped me pick out a is an Isabel Kramer um, sweater to make with this so i'm you know that will be on my needle sometime this year uh and a lot of these socks again are mina phillips patterns i'm a big fan of her sock patterns so and she does a german short row heel in garter and i really like it and so i alternate between the regular german short row heel and stockinette and then short row heel and garter and the afterthought heel whatever so it's a real good mix. And I did a little bit of hat knitting. A couple of them are with their owners because I gave them away. This is by far my favorite hat. I can't seem to take it off. I want to wear it everywhere. And uh, this is the Helen Stewart Kindling hat from one of her knit vents a few years ago, which she has around Christmas. And I have this pom pom. I tied onto it. I love this hat. Love it. Love it. Anyway. It's going to give it away, but I've changed my mind. Not going to do it. Then, um, I also did the shift along hat, which I really love doing. This is an Andrea Mowry pattern, shift along. And I use spin cycle and uh, spin cycle in her sport base, in their sport base, and then the dyed in the wool. Uh, so I really, really love doing this hat. And that won't give it away. And then the last hat I did was last month when I went to Mason Dixon and Jen Giggly had a had a uh, class on this stripey, scrappy, stripey hat. It's the funniest hat in the world. And it's the warmest hat in the world. It's made with Rowan Big Wool. And I'm telling you, it's reacquainted me with double pointed needles. And I'm not sorry. Um, I kind of don't mind. So this was very, 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 very fun. And Bob loves it. My husband loves it. 
because it's sort of quirky, you know. Uh, and that's, you know, I did some other things I gave away. I did that Montana Mountain Cal that I put on Instagram that my friend Beverly is wearing. Um, I did some other things that have been sent to their owners, but all in all, I was pretty pleased with the work that I did in 2019 and a lot of lessons learned. Good and bad. Okay. People, you have to help me. I'm seriously in Whipland, Whip Island, I think I call it. I can't get off the island. First of all, I have terrible cast on itis. I want to cast on everything I see. And my rationale is, well, I'm just trying it. I'm just, you know, just trying. Well, I need to stop trying, okay? I also have decided Mars of Hay Brown Berry has um, a 2020 stash challenge. I think maybe Morse and Maria of Ninja Chickens. I don't know who, maybe Natalie of Remembrance Pottery. I don't know. There's a group of them that have done this 2020 stash challenge using most of your stash. So I've been talking to my knitting group about, we all have a ton of stash. And one of my knitting group is enabling us and giving us her overflow stash, which we all are taking because we love it. Uh, so we're, she's just transferring her stash to our stash, which is kind of okay. Um, so I got one of her things and I started another sweater. Okay, I use serious sweater cast on itis, shawl cast on itis, and sock cast on itis. Now that I've learned two at a time toe up socks, which I really, really love from my friend Cynthia of, um, she stays next up, something like that. Anyway, she's great. Love her. Anyway, she's a master knitter to me. And she finally she finally conquered our fear of um, two at a time. And now I like it. I really like two at a time. So I have I have something on needles, which if I follow this rule, which I'll tell you about, I might actually get them done. And things are in various stages of development. Take, for example, so I'll share my whips with you, so maybe you can help me. You can't help me, I'm not helpful. But anyway, let's pretend you can help me. <laughs> and you know what, put in the comments below which one you think I should finish first, okay? Let's, let's do that, maybe I can be held accountable to you and that will help a lot. Okay, hold on, I have to pull this chair, my handy dandy Vanna chair closer so I can show you all of my craziness. Okay. See, I can't even find what I'm going to show you. That's sad. That, yeah, there it is. There it is. Many of you know that I've been doing the stone crop cardi. Oh, this is a fabulous project bag I got when I was at Stitches in Atlanta last May. And, um, I spilled coffee all over it. And it's by 65 South, which is a road from Atlanta to the beach through Alabama. And I'm, it's my, I grab this bag all the time. It's like a perfect size tote bag. So many of you know that I've been working on the Stone Crop Cardi by Andrew, Andrea Mowry and that Black Mountain, hello ladies. Um, Melanie Black Mountains helped me take out the yarn and Donna and Don were so gracious. Uh, and I'm using Magpie fibers for the blue, which I love. Magpie, can get enough of it. Yes, I can, I can. I'm doing stash. Stash. Um, okay, I'll, I'll come back to that. Anyway, so Magpie fibers, one sleeve complete. Yay. Got the right length, did everything I wanted to do with it. I am on the second sleeve and it's killing me. I'm not kidding. It's causing mucho discomfort. Uh, I'm on 12 inch cirques. I'm finding that 12 inch cirques really work better with me, for me. Again, this is all for me, with color work. Um, I also went ahead and got a ring from Sani in Finland, who does this uh, ring where you can, and, and a lot of people do a ring 
where you do two color work that you, because I'm a continental knitter and I hold the yarns and, and so what I've been doing with color work is knitting main color and throwing the um, contrast color. Uh, and that's what I do with this. This is a lot more for, I don't know if it's fing because it's fingering, I have no idea. But this is, this color work has become a little bit more difficult for some reason. I tried on magic loop, it didn't work on magic. I, I just kept getting tangled. But 12 inch circs really, really work for color work. Then I decided to buy a ring that I saw somebody use and found the ring and it's from Finland and the artist's name is Sani. And I don't know if you can see, but you put a strand of each color in one of these and you just, for a continental knitter, and you just wear it like this and you knit. And it works. It works unbelievably. Again, the problem is how I'm holding the needles. It's almost like I have tennis elbow. So whatever happening here is going down to my hands, going up to my shoulder. So I've had some chiropractic work, some massage therapy, and their suggestion is stop knitting for a couple days. Just give it a rest for a couple days. This is day two, I'm going out of my mind. That's all I'll say. Anyway, I seriously, I even though it's painful, I would, I could probably finish this in a couple of days, you know, for me. Finish, finish. And then I would have a brand new sweater. So, I'll tell you that another rule that I have. Anyway, so this is almost there. But I need, I need to give it a rest. I need, it's just, ow. But yeah, that's why I'm podcasting today. I'm busy. I'm also busy organizing, which is good. So this is whip number one. Crazy. All right. Let's stick with the sweater story. Whip number two sweater is a test knit, which I failed to deliver on, but I was really pleased to at least be included in it. This is now called the Sandoval sweater. It's by Annie Haas of This Bird Knits. By the way, all of this will be down below for your information. There'll be links to it all. And the Sandoval sweater is a beautiful color work sweater. And I've chosen to use um, Spin Cycle Wilder, which is this gray, it's their sport weight gray. And then their Robin's Egg Blue color is the, um, their, it's not dyed in the wool, it's, it's something else. It's their light worsted base. And it is called, uh huh, private label? No. It is called, that's Wilder. Oh. This is called Dream State. And it's their light worsted. And the colorway again is Robin's Egg. And it's fantastic. So I'm finished with the color work on the body. And I just have to go maybe four more inches down. And then I do the sleeves. And I don't think there's a lot more color work on the sleeves. It's a, so the sleeves should be boonk, straight, straight, straight down. And I think it's a little swancho like. So it's not going to be a it's gonna be a little bit of a gap between the underarm and the arms, which again is fine. This is gonna fit me a, probably a little bit um, smaller. It's not gonna be really wide, but I love it. And, and I'll tell you, it was a very enjoyable thing. It was my first time I tested it. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a fun experience. And again, this is uh, stranded color work again. third sweater that's color work. This, this, so crop. Gonna take a color work break now. But I do love it. I do love it because it's sort of like interesting to keep going. You know, you're just interested in keeping going. However, then I was gifted some stash, which I photographed and then I kept looking, at, kept looking at it and I thought, you know what, what's one more sweater? There's no rush, there's no deadline. Except when you start a sweater, it's terribly addicting to move through it for the increases and the, and there's lace here and there's the lace section and 
short rows. It's just interesting. It just keeps you really engaged. So of course I had to do another sweater held in my um, Mrs. Brown bag, project bag, which I got several years ago. First, I want to tell you about the yarn. The yarn is magnificent, magnificent. Um, it is Swan's Island, and it is the Sterling Collection of Swan's Island. And yeah, it's coming, it's reading the color right on this, and the color is Carnelian. So it's like a rusty brown. Now this is a blend of merino wool and black alpaca. So you get, if, if you're one of my Knit Stars compadres, there was a whole thing on alpacas this last season. So I learned a lot about black alpacas, which is very interesting. This, by the way, one skein of this is 525 yards. So for me, I just need two skeins because a thousand yards is a fine size for a sweater for me. So I have started, Isabel Kramer's look, I'm, I usually don't, I use the companion a lot, but for some reason on this sweater, I'm using the pattern itself. This is Isabel Kramer, who have never knit, I've read her patterns, but I've never knit one. Um, and I might, this might be my new favorite designer for sweaters. In fact, the one that's, when my DK yarn gets here, I'm planning on knitting another Isabel Kramer sweater. This is called Yum. And you see there's lace on the bodice. It's a pretty straightforward sweater. It's not really overcomplicated. I could do long sleeves or I could do short sleeves. I'll, when I get there, I'll decide. But this is how it's knitting up. It's sort of in an awkward phase. I'm right before um, the short rows of the bodice, but it's also a rolled uh, neckline, which I kind of like. And there's lots of, let me see if I can straighten this out a little. Lots of lace to it and, and this yarn is a dream. And for the first time with this yarn, I usually have to go down a needle size because my gauge swatch is always, um, was it too big? Just I forget, anyway. I always have to go down. This time I didn't. This time I met gauge. Very unusual. Um, but it's the yarn, it's the fiber. And there's just little black alpaca hairs everywhere. <laughs> but this is not a super wash. This is just merino wool and alpaca. And this, the, hand feel is amazing. So that's Swan's Island, which I've never knit with. They're out of Maine and I'll put a link below to their site and it's beautiful to work with. So I'm excited about this. I am in a section where I just have to go round and round until I get to the short rows for the bodice and then you just go round and round again. So it's a pretty straightforward knit. There's nothing really complicated about it. And the yarn is just lovely to deal with. One thing I have to do is I have to slow down when I knit because I like, I don't know, I'm making stitches or something. <laughs> so when I go back and count, I'm like, wait, wait, what happened? Oh, what happened? What, what is this? Is the yarn over? No, what is it? I don't know what I, what I did, but I, in a couple of spots, three spots in particular, it looked like I yarned over instead of knit, but I didn't. Anyway, I took it down. My friend Sarah English has taught me how to look at look at your knit to just to determine whether or not you've dropped a stitch. If the pat, if this, if the rows line up with what's on the needle, you haven't dropped it. You just have a loose, loose. And I, as a loose knitter, I tend to do that. So I need to be a little bit more thoughtful about when I knit. Um, that kind of thing. When I go round, and round, and round, and round. Sometimes I get, I kind of lose my focus. <laughs> oh, really? Do you? Um, Anyway, so is that it? Three. One, 90% of the way there. The other, I would say 50%, 60% of the way there. The third, 20% of the way there. So I've got some time on that one. Now, oh no. Is this another one? No. Is this another one? No? No. Okay. All right. So it's one, two, three whips. 
Oh, there are more. There are there are more, but I'm only going to share with you a few of them because I am embarrassed about how I cannot seem to focus. Look at this cute little notions bag. When my um, knitting group and I exchanged our Christmas gifts, one of our gals, extremely talented, made us all little dishcloths with the outline of a squirrel because we call ourselves the squirrels, and. We got this from another, I mean, it's, I love those girls. It's great notion bag, can put a lot in here. It's only my 17th notion bag. All right, uh, I'm gonna go to another before I go to this one. Uh, you remember I went to the MDK one day event in Nashville and I picked up some uh, Camellia fibers, which I then joined their sport club. Love it. And I'm knitting a cowl with their colorway. This is worsted with their colorway salt. And this is just an amazing self-striping crazy yarn. And I, you know, I'm just doing a basic cowl pattern I made up, which is ribbing and just stocking it because I really wanted the, the yarn to show. And isn't it beautiful how it's striping? It's so beautiful how it's striping. I just love it. And the weight is just right. And I'm really, really happy with it. And it's on size eight needles and just go round and round. And I'll probably do up to about 10 inches and then um, do another set of ribbing and bind off. Um, I also am discovering, instead of going right into ribbing, I'm doing a round of um, stockinette first on, so it slightly rolls. I kind of like that. I don't know, I kind of like that. So it's not just straight ribbing, it's stocking it and then ribbing. I don't know, I'm gonna experiment with that on a couple of things. So we'll see, anyway, this is very, very fun and very mindless and you can sit and just in a couple rows and put it down. We'll come back to that point in a minute. All right. When I found out that Stephen West Yes, I hope many of you know who Stephen West is. This very, very uber talented, incredible um, designer. Uh, he now lives in Amsterdam. He's from Tulsa, Oklahoma originally, but he now lives in Amsterdam. Anyway, Stephen always goes to Vogue Knitting Live in New York. He starts there and then he does the tour of a couple of yarn, a couple of states and yarn shops around and then goes back. Um, he started at Revival Yarn Shop in Athens, Georgia, which is University of Georgia town. I think I mentioned this in my last podcast. And um, he had a two day workshop. I was only able to get into the second day, but it was the first day that I really wanted. The second day was really about color work. And the uh, first day was about uh, what he calls shawl evolution. Uh, and the class was limited to 20, which is a perfect size, right? I, I really do well in that kind of a group. Uh, and I was disappointed that I didn't get the first day, but I was okay with getting the second day, it was fine. As long as I got to meet him and have my picture taken with him that I wanted. Um, and I have knit in one Stephen West shawl. And I was not daring at all with the colors and I use stash and I think it's fine. Uh, again, I might have done it a little smaller. I should have done it a little bigger, but that's okay. You know, it's fine. Um, anyway, so he put out, so I, I ended up, I was number one on the waiting list for the first day, which was my preferred day. And I ended up getting into the first day and I was so excited. And the second day, I still was on the list, but if I canceled some, unless somebody took my place, I wasn't really gonna get any money back. So somebody did take my place. The gals at Kara and Lindsay at Revival are fabulous. So if you're in the Athens, Georgia area, or in the Atlanta area, take a ride out to Athens and check their shop out. It's small, but it's mighty. It's got gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Uh, and they are just super gracious. 
So I will be back, ladies, because I will... You have a lot of quints. They carry quints. I love quints. <laughs> so I will be back. Um, anyway, so they, they did a great job hosting Steven, and I loved meeting him. I got a tremendous kick out of meeting him. And uh, he is... He, now, I first met him, not really met him, um, but he was on the first Knit Stars. And Knit Stars, if you guys don't know, is an online, I don't know, four, four week class with different designers that Shelly Brander from Loops Yarn Shop in Tulsa, Oklahoma, founded this whole concept of Knit Stars. And she goes around the world to wherever these stars are and films them in their studios doing their thing. Steven had like a four or five, maybe more part series in Knit Stars 1. And I fell in love with him because he's quirky. He's a great teacher. He is, his creativity knows no bounds. His color colors know no bounds. And it's just, so I felt like I knew him. So I met him and had my requisite picture with him. He's very tall. Um, and he sat with us and he selected some yarns for me for a project I was work I was going to work on. And I got started on it right away. Why? Because he was there and I was so Anyway, uh, in the meantime, I thought I would be able to do something in time for that workshop. Of course I didn't. Uh, but I wanted to do the Radiate Shawl which he came out with pretty recently in the last couple months. Uh, and I loved it because I love the shape of it. And it reminds me a lot of Dotted Rays. Is this it? No, this is not it. He gave us a free pattern. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll put the link below. But the Radiant Shawl is a big crescent shawl. And in the spirit of my using stash, I decided that I'm going to use kind of stash that I had lying around. I, I had um, a hedgehog um, colorway called Hunter. It's in her, I guess it's her sock yarn. And it is a beautiful green with twin touches of blue. It's beautiful. And then I had an my advent minis from a couple of years ago from Nor George Yarns, 2018 advent calendar, that I wound groups of colors together, like Magic Knot, and wound it together. And this is the one that I chose to go with that. So you can see the greens, it sort of looks like a gradient, although it's, it's three different mini skeins of yarns. So I decided to use that and this is the shawl so far. I mean, it's getting bigger and bigger. It's over 400 stitches. And those of you who have been around know that I don't do, the, I don't do well with huge, but I think this one has to be bigger. So Stephen looked at the yarn and went, oh, wow, that's fantastic, which was validating. Um, and I said, okay, where should I go from here? And he said, I want you to do a lot more of the green, like six more, um, garter ridges of the green and then I want you to go back to single striping the white and the green for maybe four or six times and then I cord edge with a lime green I'm gonna do that I showed this to my knitting group they're like mm, okay <laughs> they're not Stephen West people um, but they do have appreciation for fine yarn, fine yarns and this is really uh, a fine yarn project I don't you know I want this to be as big as possible. I've already cut down on the repeats in some areas, but that's okay, because this is gonna be huge. It's gonna be big. So I'm excited about this, and Stephen has given me direction for the rest of it, and I will follow that direction, because I think it's gonna come out really well. When he saw the yarn, he was like, ooh. I was like, okay, that's good. I've done good there. Um, so that's, that's one that's in process. Then, <laughs> Let's not stop there, shall we? On, on Stephen West and Shawls. Um, one of my friends, Bron, um, that I knit with at Heart and Spirit, and she was also at this workshop. Bron, um, last time I saw her at Heart and Spirit, she was making the Pierre Shawl, 
another recent, fairly recent pattern from Stephen West. And um, my friend Judy and I were there and we were like, wah, wow, that's spectacular. So I thought, you know what, I wanna do that. That, because he said, bring something, start something that, of mine that you wanna start. I thought, you know, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the Pierre because it's semi-circle, there's a lot of lace touches and twisted rib and so there's a variety in the stitches which I like and it looked not as quirky and as uh as, as I was so I I said I'm gonna do the Pierre shawl it's a DK shawl I don't have a DK shawl but I thought yeah I'll do it so Stephen picked the colors for me in the shawl I will tell you that these colors are way outside my comfort zone. Like way outside my comfort zone. And I thought of telling him what I liked. Grays and blues and um, more earth tony colors. But I thought, no, Stephen is picking out my yarn for the Pierre shawl. Shut your mouth. Let him do it. And you do it. All right, first let me show you the pattern. It's a beautiful pattern. I will show. And again, bronze is beautiful. My friend bronze is really coming out well. I don't know if you can see this, but it looks kind of, I don't want to say Helen stewart -y, but it looks kind of feminine, more feminine than like the big graphic things that he has. So I thought, um, you know, he wears it kind of like this. And he has like a solid version or a striped, or not a striped version. No, he doesn't have a solid version. I guess you could do solid. He's done his in walk collection, which is, I didn't, didn't have walk collection at, at uh, Revival, but he picked out my yarns. Again, way outside my comfort zone. I thought, I'm gonna go with it. I'm just gonna take a leap of faith and go with it. So the first color is this sort of pale green color. It's a Malintosh, which I love, Malintosh DK. And it is called Havana. So it's just a Malintosh DK called Havana. That's color A. And that's what I started with. That's, those were the instructions. So it was an unusual cast on, an unusual cast on. I really enjoyed it. I'm on the third section now, twisted rib section. This yarn is heaven, just saying. It's great. I learned a new cast on way and uh, he was there to help me and he did. And he did a couple of, showed me how to do it and I did the rest of it and it turned out great. So this is gonna be a border all around it. This sort of section is a border all around it. So if you can see, it's, it's really beautiful. So this is color number A. Wait for it. It gets sort of quirky. This is another Madeline Tosh DK. Okay, way outside my comfort zone. This is Button Jar Blue. See my face? This is not a color I would be drawn to, but I'm trusting the color master. The other colors make me a little bit more comfortable. Still, not totally. This is Big Sky Fibers. I've never heard of them, they're out of Tennessee. I thought it was Blue Sky for a while. I was telling my friend, oh yeah, it was Blue Sky. No, it's Big Sky. This is Rosemary Beach, which by the way, is a beach community not far from my beach house down on in Northwest Florida. This is a beautiful color. It, it reads green blue and it's sort of very subtle. So this will go this, A, B, C, right? Again, more in my comfort zone. Well, kinda. This is also Big Sky and it is called Ocean Breeze. Those, this is what's gonna make it up. So he's very much about going light to dark, 
light. And, and what I've noticed is he's got a tendency to pick out something really bright or really bold or really speckled as a second or third color and then fade into. This is not a fade, by the way. This is just, I don't know. This is way outside of my color comfort zone. But how fun is this? By the way, the pattern is a blast because it constantly changes. So we'll see. I started it. Now I can't knit on it right now, although that's, you know, anything new, anything I just cast on, that's all I want to work on, but I'm not going to. I'm going to follow this new rule that I'll tell you about. So yeah, Stephen Westland. He is gracious, kind, generous, lovable. Just keep, I'll just keep telling you what he is. When he, ha when he comes back to the States, I'm sure he's going to come back. If he doesn't come back to Revival, I know that he's at Black Mountain Yarn Shop this weekend. This is their 10th anniversary. Happy anniversary, Donna. Happy anniversary, gang. You just continue to blow me away, Black Mountain. And yeah, so he's there now, right now. And, and then I think he goes to a couple more yarn shops, maybe in the Midwest or something. And... This is being held in my new Fringe Supply bag. When I was at MDK and Fringe Supply is in the same complex, same warehouse, I picked this out and Karen, um, who was the owner of Fringe Supply, picked this out for me. I'm not crazy about this um, wax color, but Karen assures me it would be fine. So, and I like the shape of it. and. Love it. Okay. More yarn has been picked out for yet another shawl that he recommends, which I'm not even going to go there now because see that closet right behind me? It's living there right now because I'm not casting it on. He also gave us um, some, just some free patterns to experiment with. So I'll be doing some of that here and there. Semicircular, triangle, um, all his little tips and tricks, like his short, how he does his short rows and his bind off, his eye cord bind off and his favorite increases. And so I have a little diary of what he's got. So I'm pleased about that. I, I can't show you anything else because I'm A, a little bit embarrassed by it, and B, um, I need better organization. I just have this need to cast on everything, and so I need you to help me and tell me which one of these projects that I should do this method with. And I'm gonna explain this method, and I'm gonna put a link below for this method. So let me tell you what it's called. It's called the Gideon Method. Um, Wool and Honey Yarn Shop, which is located in Michigan. Uh, I'm, one of my friends sent me a link to what they call the Gideon Method. Um, I don't know what, I think somebody at Wool and Honey was told this method by a friend, by one of their customers, and so they've, been, they've decided to adopt it this year. And we were talking amongst ourselves in our knit group, and we thought, you know what? We probably should adopt that. And I really like the idea of it. I can't say that I would, will be successful, but I will include a link below to the blog post that was written by the Wool and Honey folks about this method. Basically, the method is, if you have way too many whips as I do, uh, I have socks over there, I can't, it's, it's getting embarrassing. It's getting like, what's wrong with her? Why can't she focus? Why can't I focus? Anyway, the Gideon method is you select five long-standing whips or whips that have been around uh, or whips that you want to get finished. However you define it, you pick five of them. One, two, three, four, five, I'm six. <laughs> I'm not going to count the P.O. shawl because I just started that, so I'm not going to count them. But I have five that I need to get in, some, in various stages of completion. You pick one 
and you only work on that one for 12 hours. The 12 hours doesn't have to be a consistent 12 hours. If you have one hour, take the one hour and just work on that project. If you find yourself with a couple of hours, you do that. If you find yourself with five minutes at a lunch break or uh, sitting in traffic waiting for your kids or sitting in a line waiting for kids from school or airport knitting or airplane, whatever, travel knitting, a total of 12 hours, and you're going to have to keep track of this, on one of your whips. That's it. Once that 12 hours is up, regardless of where you are, you pick up the next whip and you go another 12 hours. That first whip that you started with goes to the back of the pack. It's not like you go between the first two. So you do the first one, 12 hours is up, not finished, it goes to the bottom of the pile, and you go to number two, do 12 hours, maybe you finish it, maybe not. You keep adding whips if you have one, <laughs> 17 whips, or <laughs> you keep adding whips to the back of the pack until you feel you're done. I think that might work, but then again, I don't know, because there are certain knits that I'm working on. I, I have, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a medical issue <laughs> which is I get really bad tendonitis and my chiropractor and my massage therapist tell me it's emanating from my elbow like the back here ow and it's going on my shoulder and down to in fact the front of my hand was killing me although it's not now because I had it worked on and I have to do like ice plunges it's just super inflamed and uh, I just have to ease up on it. And it doesn't help when I'm working on that 12 inch surf because it, in, in the strand, it doesn't help. So um, that might actually, even though I probably can finish that within 12 hours. So part of me says I should just go ahead and dig in. And if I have to take a break after for a couple of days because I've hurt myself so badly, <laughs> so be it. I'll be finished with it. So yeah, that's the one that's really like the clarion call to like, finish me, you're so close. So I might. It's not something I can travel with because it's stranded, I'm wearing that ring and it's, it's, and it's, and I also wonder if it isn't the bulk of the sweater that's kind of weighing me down. That's yeah, keep picking it up, turning it, picking it up, turning it. Um, number two is gonna be that, um, so that would be my number one whip that I should work on. Uh, number two is gonna be the radiate shawl because I'm really, I'm like 70% of the way there. I should work on that, that other sweater, that other color work sweater. Oh God. So uh, yeah. Yeah, that's my story. Uh, let me see what else. Really no other chatter. I mean, we're just getting through the winter weather in Atlanta, which is not great. You know, it's hot, it's cold, it's nasty, it's rainy. We had a lot of rain, a lot of rain. So is a lot of a lot of the country have a lot of rain. Um, it might be cold for three or four days, like super cold, like 20 degrees at night, and then it warms up to 40 degrees at night, 35, 55 during the day, which is our norm. So it is sweater weather. But sweater weather with like a down vest, not really a thing. This, I just love this sweater. I just love this sweater. Anyway, um, Caitlin, by the way, you will be on Knit Stars in a few weeks in February. And each Knit Star, by the way, does a pattern just for us for a little while. So we'll see what she comes up with, whether I want to do it or not. But I think I'm going to take a break from Colorwork sweaters for now. I think three in a row is a little <laughs> and uh, I have to dedicate myself to Stephen West shawls. I'm still doing socks. In fact, I'll show you a pair, which is, you know, I'm really, not really thinking of this as one of my whips. It's a sock is kind of mindless. I did get this yarn idea from um, my friend Yolanda of Happiness. Uh, I didn't know about this yarn and it's called Turtle Pearl and self-striping. This is my two at a time. And they're fun. I just put in a heel. This is the German short row heel. Uh, yeah, it's fun. It's a fun little 
quick knit. And again, I don't, for some reason, this kind of knitting does not bother me. It doesn't bother my hands and bother my arms because it's pretty mindless and simple and I really like it and it's cool beans. So I'm not really counting this as, as one of my Gideon Method whips. I'm gonna count what I showed you, minus the Pierre shawl. Just the sweaters and the radiate. Um, but to have one, two, three sweaters on the needles, that'd be a little bit extreme. Finish one. Yeah, this is fine. This is just a fun, I really like their yarn. They give it to you in 250 gram skeins and they stripe up exactly the same way, which is brilliant if you like matchy-matchy. And sometimes I do like matchy-matchy. So, and, my, and some of my friends in my knitting group have just started to learn how to knit socks two at a time and they're enjoying the heck out of it. So, and I could, so this is fun and again, not really, part of the whip pile in terms of, oh my God, I gotta get it done. This just will be what it will be, when it will be it. Uh, and I got this cute little sock knitting. Um, this held in my Maria Elena Bliss project bag, which for some reason for me is perfect for my two at a time socks. And this cute little sock pin I got from Twig and Horn, it's so fun. Um, yeah. I'm also doing another Helen Stewart show, but I'm thinking very very seriously of frogging it because I'm not really loving it. Um, I did frog a sweater that I had kind of sorted. Uh, I wasn't loving it and I have a good use for the yarn somewhere else. I'll probably go through some more of my older whips and frog. I have a couple in mind that I'm probably going to frog, unfortunately. But fortunate in that I'm not letting them linger. Some chatter, everything's fine at home, nothing going on. Um, I did uh, 2020 sock knitting, shawl knitting, and hat knitting in my on my Ravelry group page. So stop by there if you'd like to um, participate. I do will periodically select uh, one of my knitters for a giveaway of some kind. So hop on over. Some people are making some beautiful stuff, and it's really thrilling to me to have that. I think that's enough, don't you? So I hope to podcast a little bit more often. It's great seeing everybody. Thank you so much for being part of my journey, my knitting journey, and also refer me to other people. And subscribe if you have not subscribed, and give me some feedback about which of these whips I should employ my Gideon method with now. I'm leaning towards finishing the stone crop as much as it hurts. Okay, love you all. Thank you for stopping by. And um, I do have some acquisitions I'll share with you, but there was just a lot I had to share today. So I think that's enough. Love you, have a great rest of your day and upcoming week. And uh, hope the weather is good or tolerable where you are. Love you, see you soon, bye.